Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, something really special is going to happen. For the first time in quite a few videos, you will not have to put up with that much of my ridiculous commentary, because it's at this point where I will finally have enough of the AOU built to give a satisfactory explanation of how on earth any of this stuff is going to implement our AOU functions. But before we do that, we have one final thing to build. That's right, we need to do Flood Carry. So Flood Carry is actually probably the easiest out of all of this. You know why? Literally all it is, well all it does, all anything, is simple. It powers every single carry line. So that's literally exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to power every single carry line. And then, that'll be Flood Carry. It's literally quite that easy. Well, I say quite, but yeah. I'm not going to build with world it because I don't think I need it. Shouldn't take long enough to justify anything. And yeah. Howdy, good sir. And I don't have the heart to tell that dude to stop bothering me because I'm recording, so I'm just going to let him keep talking. So yeah, you'll unfortunately have to put up with that. So yeah, now I'm just going to build a glowstone tower. It's really just like any other carry line. I don't even... No. Hmm. I can foresee this becoming slightly bothersome to the video, but... Uh, that's alright. Everything's going to work out. There we go. That should be Flood Carry. Except it doesn't power that. Hmm. But, hmm. Actually, does this reach, right? This reaches. All the way to the top. And no more. Hmm. The only trick left is I have to somehow power the bottom carry. The carry in. And... I think the way I'm going to do that is going to somehow involve that. I'm not quite sure how yet, but it'll come to me. Hmm. It really doesn't matter how it's done as long as it powers it, but I, I want to do fancy things because I'm that type of person. I'm a fancy type of person. So yeah. So what if I... Hmm. What if the torch was right here? Are you following me? Hmm. No. What if the torch was right here? Hmm. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Aha! So now, what if the torch is right here? And... That... Aha, and I can power it from right here. Why does it even have a repeater there? I don't know. But it does. Don't even know why that was there, but whatever, it's not there anymore. So, awesome. Now... Aha! Flood carry is... Aww! Oh, so close. So close. Hmm. Wait. I have an idea. And I get the impression it's going to be ridiculous, but that's alright. So now doing that should... Come on. Now why doesn't that reach? If it, brought... if it reached from there, why won't it reach from there? Hmm. That doesn't even make sense. I think there's a glitch in signal length, because... Hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Whoops. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 13! What?! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That should be reaching. Redstone travels fifteen blocks. Come on. Don't don't screw me over like this. There we go. I, <laughs> I have no idea what that was. Does it do that when I turn this off? Well I turn it off, everything turns on, of course. When I turn it back on though, does it 
huh. That's weird. Well, whatever. <laughs> Problem solved. Yeah! <sighs> okay, cool. So that took way too long, but yeah. Now, flood carry. Cool. And it's bothering me, so I'm going to put it here. There we go. And... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, alright. So from this point, I should be able to get a nice... Carrion. Carrion's right here, right? Yeah, that it. That carrion. Cool. So, flood carry, carrion. Perfect. So now comes the moment we've been waiting for. Fletching has joined the game, and now I have two people trying to talk to me now, don't I? Oh no, it's just him. But, more importantly, I have now the ALU in place that I can finally, finally, tell, start t going over how on earth this is going to implement all those functions. One moment, I need to get some privacy for, from Fletch. No offense, Fletch, it's just recording. Okay, so I'm back, and while I was gone, I thought of a slightly better way of doing flood carry. Rather than what I was doing, I power the whole thing from this block, but here's the thing, if power goes through this block, it can go into here, so I can just put the torch right there. There you go, problem solved. Nothing left to it, and I actually wonder, could I possibly power it from there? Would appear not, but oh well. I'm still happy with it, so yeah. Anyways, how on earth can this AOU possibly perform all logical functions? And actually, first off, I should probably bust some things, shouldn't I? Well, too bad, I'm not doing it. But anyways, I'm going to get a lever on this one. Will this actually power everything? Whatever, even if it doesn't, it powers everything enough, so it's good. There you go. Or in cut carry, cut carry takes inverted signal. So, might as well just do that so I'd know. Or, there's or. Or, cut carry, flood carry, and carry in. And, that means right now, this thing should be adding. So, I'm going to test that. So, 3 plus 5. My classic AOU test input. And it gets 8. Excellent! Okay, cool. So now, how on earth can all these systems possibly implement all of our logical functions? Because, believe it or not, this implements every single one of these logical functions except for shift left and shift right. Just this, right here. Well, you see, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, there was this man named Augustus de Morgan. And Mr. de Morgan, he came up with some very interesting ideas about Boolean logic. In particular, he discovered a very interesting property of logic gates. This applies to almost any logic gate. There's only three conditions it has to meet for this law to apply to it. First off, it has to be logic gate with at least two inputs, so sorry, not gate and identity gate fans, you, his law won't work for you. Second, oh dear, I just destroyed my microphone. That's okay. Second law. I forgot where it was now, let's see. I, I just, okay, no, can't be not gate normal. Okay, I remember. S second requirement, <laughs> alright, I'm back now. It, the logic gate must have three outputs which are the same. So in other words, like an OR gate, three of the outputs are one. You can ever have zero, one, that's one, one, zero, that's one, and one, one, that's also one. So basically that's every single logic gate except XOR and XNOR off the top of my head. I don't, I don't believe there's another logic gate which has, which doesn't have three outputs and isn't not gate or identity gate. So yeah, and third requirement, I forgot, but that's all right. It's just, it excludes some gates like, the projection gate and the negation gate, those types of gates. Those won't work with it. I forgot what the exact law is, but it excludes those gates. That's the important part. And here is what it is. 
you can take one of those gates, any one of those gates which fits those requirements. So I'll take our friend the OR gate. So here are the inputs, and actually, just to be a bit more formal about it, yeah, here are the inputs, and here, yeah, wait, hmm, no, I want to go down one, because that, that's my style. And here is the output. So, cool. So, essentially, any logic gate except not identity, XOR, XNOR, and projection and negation. Any of other logic gate than that. And you take one of those logic gates, what you can do is you can turn it into any other logic gate that also meets those requirements by some combination of inverting the inputs and inverting the outputs. So, for example, if I invert both inputs to this logic gate, then it's not an OR gate anymore. It's now become a NAND gate. So that's some combination, and it's created a difference. And of course, the infamous, if you invert all three of them, the OR gate turns into an AND gate. So yeah. There's also a few more, like, for example, if I only invert one of them, this makes one of the implies gates. I don't know which one off the top of my head, but hey, it's one of the implies gates. And of course, if you power just two of them, you get a NOR gate. So yeah, some combination of inverting all the inputs of any of these logic gates can get you any of the other logic gates that meet those requirements. So, cool law. Yeah, those are really cool laws. You should definitely look at them. They're interesting. But that right there is the key reason why it's possible to do all of these logical functions. So, right now, we have an OR function built into it. Remember the OR function? Yeah. Guess what? We added invert A and invert B. We also added flood carry, which I'll go over in a second how that's equivalent to invert output. So just from that, since we have OR gate, we got for free the AND gate the, and the NOR gate. J for completely for free. Simply because of that law right there. So we just got three logic gates for free. And you, and actually you can get every logic gate from that. So if I want to add more logic gates, it doesn't require any more hardware. Every single logic gate can be made from that. Except for, of course, XOR, XOR, yada yada yada. XOR. Now, we don't get this one for free, because it doesn't fall into that law, so how do we get the XOR function? Well, actually, let's just go to the functions that gives us just based on that. So if you have invert A, invert B, some logical function, and flood carry, that gets us add, and, or, and or. So the only thing that we you don't have from that are subtraction, XOR, and the shifting, of course, I don't have yet. But we, you do have subtracting in XOR, and I'll show you why. The reason you have XOR is because of cut carry. Why? Well, right now you have two XNOR gates. XNOR1 and XNOR2. Now, if I don't use one of the inputs, and one of the inputs is the carry, then the XNOR is just an inverter, right? So if I cut carry, then that makes this wire always turn on, meaning this will always be an inverter. Wait, or does it always turn off? Actually, let's test that. I don't remember. Um... Well, it's something. Oh no, it's this wire. I'm looking at the wrong wire. No wonder. Yeah, it makes them all turn off. Okay. And that makes it always invert. So, what happens when you invert an XNOR? You get an XOR gate. That's why there's a cut carry. And just, just to go over it again, just in case you are unclear about anything, all the cut carry function is doing is it's taking all of our carry towers and powering them. And since all of these are potentially inverted into carries, if all of them are always turned off, none of the carries can ever be generated. So, there you go. And so that gets us the XOR function. So, yeah. An OR function, I already went over how that gets the OR function. But I'll go over it again, why not? So, you start with XNOR, so XNOR, which is just NOR or the AND gate, an OR gate or an AND gate, 
and then I'm inverting it. So OR gate is assuming cut carry is an effect, so it's assuming that the second XNOR is effectively just an inversion. So in fact, let's go ahead and do that. So cut carry is an effect. Every th single one of these things of stuff, that thing, the, the input, the output, the XNOR, that's what I'm going for, yes. <laughs> all the XNORs are effectively being inverted. So all these essentially, yeah, XNOR and then inverted. So, all that happens is this wire powers the AND gate. And therefore, all the AND gate outputs turn off, no matter what, because, one, hey, the torch is receiving power. So what happens if I just have a NOR gate and I invert it? Get NOR gate. Exactly, this is what I meant by taking advantage of all the logic. It all comes together, it all makes sense in the end. And yeah, so there you go, there's the thing that I just went over. I completely forgot what it was. OR gate, that's right, that's right. OR gate. There you go. That's how the OR gate works. So yeah, and from that, by doing some combination of inversion, and actually I'll just show that off. So I'm going to invert the output. I'm going to flood carry. And now I've turned into a NOR gate. So this is A NOR B. So yeah, that apparently is what the NOR of them is. I'm not really paying too much attention to it, but hey, there you go. Actually, that makes perfect sense. So yeah, taking the orphan and inverting it. There you go, NOR. Hmm. And as for AND, of course, invert both inputs and invert the output. So that's the AND of them. I believe only that one, yeah, has both of them on. And that one because the signal isn't reaching, but that's alright. So yeah, there you go. That's how all of the logic gates are implemented using De Morgan's theorem. And eventually I'm going to use ROM to, man to just power all these wires for me based on logical functions. So that way I don't have to sort of remember, hey, this combination of switches does this function and such. And yeah. So, next up is subtraction. That's the only function that supposedly we don't have. But that's actually why we have carry in. Because what's the same thing as subtraction? Adding a negative number, right? 5 minus 2 is the same as 5 plus negative 2, right? So all I, all you do for subtraction, 2 cos complement. Same thing I discussed in that other video I did on subtraction. So you invert input B right here. There you go. And add 1. By inverting and adding 1, that gets you the 2's complement of it. So what is 5 minus 3? It's 2. There you go, it's magic. And yeah, <laughs> there's subtraction. There's every single AOU function except for shift left and shift right. So cool. Now, here's something that may surprise you. In this particular tutorial, I'm not going to implement shift left and shift right. I'm not going to have shifting instructions. Why? Well, that's a good question, actually. But mostly, I don't really know. But I'm not going to do it, so yeah. I guess I really just don't want to make diagonal shifters. I guess I'm being lazy. And you know what, maybe I'll do it. I'll think about it between this video and the next video. But yeah. Probably not. <laughs> don't count on it. But yeah, if you really want those, I'll leave that as an exercise to you. You can implement shift left, shift right if you want. I'm probably not going to do it because, hey, why not? It's an exercise to the viewer. There you go. <laughs> but, yeah. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where we'll start, since now we've finished the AOU, and assuming I don't decide to do that, which I probably won't, but yeah, since we now finished the AOU, all I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to start building our registers. We're going to start building our giant register modules, and those are actually going to be kind of interesting, as you'll see in the next video. So thank you, see you next time.